So here's the first lesson for the vectors portion of the Calculus and Vectors course. This is lesson one, Intro to Vectors. You can find all the supporting materials if you follow the link in the description. And let's fill out the lesson together. In this lesson, you're going to understand what a vector is, get some definitions, and also we'll learn some general notations we're going to use when working with geometric vectors. So let's get started. Part one, what is a vector? So the first thing you have to understand is the difference between a scalar and a vector. A scalar is a quantity that describes the magnitude only. It does not include a direction. So examples of things that are only magnitudes, no direction, are temperature, distance, speed, mass, those are all just magnitudes. What we're going to be focusing on for this portion of the course, however, are vectors. So a vector is a quantity that has a magnitude and a direction. Magnitude and direction. So examples of things that have magnitude and direction, well velocity has a magnitude and a direction, and forces. We're going to be doing a lot of work with forces. Forces have magnitudes and directions as well. So to summarize, scalar has magnitude only and vector has magnitude and direction. And when working with vectors, well, there's two types of vectors we're going to be working with, geometric vectors and Cartesian vectors. In this unit, we're going to be focusing on geometric vectors, where we actually draw the directed line segments that represent the vector. And those directed line segments, they have a very specific length called its magnitude, and they also have a very specific direction, which we indicate with an arrowhead at the end of the vector. So, like I said, in this unit, we're working with geometric vectors where we draw the vectors that have a very specific length and direction. In future units, we'll work with Cartesian vectors where we're going to define the vectors by using points on a Cartesian grid. Let's look at a geometric representation of a vector. So here is vector AB. This vector has a very specific magnitude indicated by the length of this line, and it has also a very specific direction indicated by this arrowhead here. This vector starts here and finishes at B, so it's going in that direction. So the notation we use to describe this vector AB looks like this. We write the starting point of the vector, A. We write the finishing point of the vector, B. And then we put a vector symbol above those two letters to indicate what we're talking about is a vector. And this vector symbol always looks exactly like this. It's always pointing to the right. So the vector we say has two, like, two parts to it. It has the tail of the vector and the head or the tip of the vector. So tail vector is where it starts and the tip of the vector is where it finishes. So this, this here is vector AB. And sometimes we can uh, name a vector with a single letter. So we could name this vector vector V if we wanted to. Now let's look here. The magnitude or size of a vector is designated using absolute value brackets. So if we were just interested in talking about not the direction of this, but just its length, just its magnitude, we could indicate that's what we're talking about by putting absolute value symbols around the vector. That tells us we're just talking about the magnitude of the vector, just its length, not its direction. And magnitude is always a non-negative value, which is why we use the absolute value symbol for it. Now let's look at how we can describe the direction of a vector. So when we're communicating the direction of a vector, there's a few different ways we could do it. The first way we're going to talk about is describing the vector based on the angle moving counterclockwise with respect to a horizontal line. So in this diagram here, I have vector PQ, right? I have the vector that starts at P and finishes at Q. So that's the notation for vector PQ. How can I describe the, the direction of that vector? Well, in relation to this horizontal line here, this vector is 110 degrees counterclockwise from that horizontal line. So in describing vector PQ, I could say PQ is 14 centimeters, right? That's its magnitude, with a direction of 110 degrees to the horizontal. So that's one way we could describe that vector. Let's try and go the other way. What if we have the description and I want you to draw the vector? Well, let's draw a vector that is five kilometers, that's its magnitude, and the direction is 30 degrees to the horizontal. So when you hear it described to the horizontal, it's always going to be described in a counterclockwise direction. So let me draw that vector for you. 
And when I draw this vector, notice that it's the length of the vector is five kilometers. So we could pick a scale. I'm not gonna worry about that too much right now, but we could pick a scale saying each centimeter is equal to a kilometer. Therefore, I would make this have a length of five centimeters and that would indicate five kilometers. So there's my vector. Show it's going in that direction with the arrowhead and label the angle counterclockwise to the horizontal with 30 degrees. And I should also label the length of it as well. Sorry, it was five kilometers was the magnitude of that vector. So the magnitude five kilometers, the direction 30 degrees counterclockwise from a horizontal. Another way we can describe the direction of a vector is with something called a true bearing. And a true bearing is a measurement of the angle um, from north where we start at a north line and move in the clockwise direction if it's a true bearing. So a true bearing describes the angle clockwise from north. So in this diagram, you can see this vector, vector u, is 135 degrees clockwise from north. So if we're going to describe that vector, well, its magnitude is 2.3 kilometers. So 2.3 kilometers, then we say at a true bearing of 135 degrees. How about if I give you the description of a vector uh, with a true bearing, and now you draw it? So if we're going to do this, it says the vector has a magnitude of two kilometers at a true bearing of 060 degrees. And a true bearing, it's important to know, always has three digits. So if your true bearing was something with only two digits, then you need to describe it by putting a zero in front. So true bearing, always three digits. So this means 60 degrees clockwise from north. So let me go ahead and draw that. And I'll keep my scale at each centimeter is a kilometer. Okay, so I've drawn the vector. I need to put an arrow indicating the direction of the vector and the angle between the north, right? North is always up. So the angle between north clockwise to that vector was 60 degrees. And I should label the magnitude of this vector. It was two kilometers. The third way we can describe the direction of a vector is with a quadrant bearing. So a quadrant bearing is always an angle between zero and 90. And it always, you always start by saying whether you're going towards north or south and then how many degrees are you moving towards either west or east? So this vector here, you would say you're moving towards south and then 35 degrees towards west. So we could describe this vector by saying its magnitude is 9.8 newtons at a quadrant bearing, at a quadrant bearing of south, right? We always say north or south first, right? We're going towards south. And then we say, how many degrees towards west or east? Well, it's 35 towards west, so we say south, 35 degrees west. That indicates you go south and then move 35 degrees towards west. And that's how we would describe vector u. For this one, let's go the other way, where I give you the description of the vector using a quadrant bearing, and you draw the geometric vector. So this vector has a magnitude of 25 kilometers an hour and a direction of north 80 degrees west. That means the direction of this vector would be 80 degrees uh, west of north. So here's north, here's west, and I need a vector that is going 80 degrees west of north. So think of it as going in the north direction and then moving 80 degrees towards west. So let me just map that off and draw the vector. And for this vector, I'll make the scale each centimeter is five kilometers an hour. So that would mean the length of this line would be five centimeters. and draw an arrow indicating the direction of this vector. And the angle is north 80 degrees west. That means the angle between here and here is 80 degrees. And I should also label the magnitude of this vector. The magnitude was 25 kilometers an hour. So I should label the magnitude of this 25 kilometers an hour. So in this example, we're going to work at converting between quadrant bearings and true bearings. This one says write the true bearing of 150 degrees as a quadrant bearing. So we have to first start, start by drawing a vector that has a true bearing of 150 degrees. And remember, true bearing means angle clockwise from north. So let me just map that off quickly. So I'm just gonna draw a vector that has that angle of rotation from north. So what we know so far is that the angle from north clockwise to that vector is 150 degrees. And we wanna describe this as a quadrant bearing. Well, a quadrant bearing you describe as either going north or south, and then how many degrees towards east or west? Well, this vector here that has a true bearing of 150, 
you would describe it with a quadrant bearing by saying you go south and then how many degrees towards east? Well, there's 180 degrees between the north and the south line. So the difference between 180 and 150 is 30. So how we would describe this as a quadrant bearing is we would say this vector is going south and then 30 degrees towards east. So that's how we would describe it as a quadrant bearing. Part B says write the quadrant bearing of north 50 degrees west as a true bearing. So the quadrant bearing tells us that the direction of the vector is towards north, but then 50 degrees towards west. So let me just map off that angle. And now let me draw a vector that has that, that quadrant bearing. And so what we know so far is the angle between north and this vector here, we know that that angle is 50 degrees, right? North 50 degrees west means that way and then 50 degrees towards west. If we want to describe this as a true bearing, which what the question asks us to do, we need to know what is the angle between the north line clockwise all the way around to that vector. So there's 360 degrees in a full circle. Well, we fell 50 degrees short of going 360. Therefore, the true bearing would be 310 degrees. That would be the true bearing that would describe the direction of that vector. So these examples were just to show you that there's multiple ways to describe the, the direction of a vector. Often we'll be using quadrant bearings and true bearings, so it's good to know the relationship between those two. Part two, let's do some definitions. Vectors that have the same or opposite direction, but not necessarily the same magnitude, we would say are parallel vectors, right? Things that are parallel uh, will never cross. So parallel vectors have the exact same or the exact opposite direction, but they don't have to have the same magnitude. And Hopefully you recognize this symbol here. This symbol of two parallel lines means parallel. So we need to be able to read this description and understand what it means. It says that vector AB is parallel to vector DC. So let me just draw those vectors for you so you can see that. So here's vector AB and here's vector DC. Now those vectors are going in opposite directions, but they would never cross and therefore they are parallel vectors. Uh, there's another pair of parallel vectors I want you to notice. It says vector AB is parallel to vector CD as well. Let me draw those two vectors. Well, here's vector AB, right? Starts at A, so tail at A, tip at B, and vector CD has tail at C, tip at D. Now, those vectors have the exact same direction, uh, different magnitudes, but they are parallel. Vectors that have the same magnitude and direction, so they're going in the exact same direction and have, they have the exact same magnitude, we would say that those vectors are equivalent. So equivalent vectors have the exact same magnitude and the exact same direction. And in the picture below, I have three equivalent vectors shown for you. Now, the position of those vectors on my screen is different, but that doesn't matter. The fact that they all are the exact same length and they're all going in the exact same direction indicates to us they are equivalent vectors. And let me just show you that with the ruler, that they're all the exact same length. Notice that vector is roughly six centimeters long. This vector, roughly six centimeters long. This vector, roughly six centimeters long. And the arrows indicate they're all going in the exact same direction. So they're all the exact same magnitude and exact same direction. So vector AB is equal to vector CD, which is equal to vector EF. That's what that says. Oh, and each of those vectors I gave a name. I called vector AB vector P. So we could also say P vector P equals vector Q equals vector R. But all three of those vectors are equivalent. So the position of the vector on the page does not matter. All that matters is the length of the vector, its magnitude, and its direction. Another definition, vectors that have the same magnitude but point in opposite directions. So exact same magnitude but point in opposite directions, we will call those vectors opposites. So opposite vectors have the exact same magnitude but opposite direction. So this indicates to us, so if we look at these two vectors, vector AB and vector BA, those two vectors have the exact same magnitude. That's what these absolute value symbols mean. It means magnitude. So the length of those two vectors is exactly the same. You can tell that here. Vector AB and vector BA, exact same length. But those vectors are not equivalent to each other because they're pointing in, in different directions. So we can't say they are equivalent vectors. But they are pointing in exact opposite directions. So we say they are opposite vectors. And there's a couple ways we can write that. So you can write an expression for an opposite vector by placing a negative sign in front of it or by reversing the order of the letters. 
So if I want to write a vector that is opposite of vector AB, so opposite of AB, there's two options for opposite of AB. I could write vector BA like this. That means instead of going from A to B, you go from B to A. So B to A, vector BA is the opposite of vector AB. Or equivalently to that, instead of reversing the order, instead of making the tip and the tail reversed, we could just multiply vector AB by negative one place a negative in front of vector AB, and that tells us we have the same magnitude of, as AB, but we're moving in the exact opposite direction. So these two statements, understanding that they mean the exact same thing is very important. Uh, a negative times vector AB means vector BA. If we were to multiply this vector by negative one, it keeps its magnitude, but reverses, it, reverses its direction. The last example I want to go through for this lesson, and this is probably the most important one, now that we have all the definitions and notations out of the way, is example two. Given vector AB, draw an equivalent vector, vector CD, and an opposite vector, vector EF. So since we know uh, all these definitions now, we know what an equivalent vector is, we know what an opposite vector is, and we know these notations, we should be able to do this question. And then we'll write an equation to show the relationship between the vectors. So for this question, um, you're not going to be able to just copy and paste like I'm going to do on the screen. So you may need a ruler to measure the actual length of AB. Because when we draw an equivalent vector, we need to make sure it has the exact same length and direction as this vector. So I'm just going to copy and paste this vector. And I can move this vector anywhere I want on the screen. It doesn't change its direction or its length. So I'll just place it here. And I'll call this vector vector CD because this is the equivalent vector to vector AB. So this is vector... C, D. This is vector C, D. And I'll label this vector here. This was vector A, B. So A, B, and C, D are equivalent vectors because they have the exact same length and the exact same direction. Now we also need to draw an opposite vector, vector E, F. So it's going to have the exact same length. So here's a vector that has the exact same length, but I need its direction to be opposite. So let me reverse its direction. Now, instead of starting down here and finishing up here, this vector is starting here and finishing down here, indicated by that arrowhead. And it says to call this vector vector EF, and I'll change the color of this one. So this is vector EF. Now let's write an equation showing the relationship between all of these. So A, B, and C, D are equivalent to each other, so I could just write vector A, B equals vector C, D. Now, those two aren't equal to EF, they're equal to the opposite of EF. So if I were to reverse the direction of EF, then I would have an equivalent vector. So how do I reverse its direction? We multiply it by a negative. So I could say those are both equal to the opposite of EF. And that's what negative vector EF means. It means same, same magnitude, opposite direction. So this is the statement that we need to write at the end. All right, that's it for the first lesson for vectors. Hopefully you have a good understanding of how we draw a vector, um, what all these notations mean, what equivalent, opposite, parallel vectors are, and also what quadrant bearings and true bearings are. So make sure you try the practice questions, and that's it.